Jake, the BYU Cougars basketball team, and and I don't want to get on my soapbox too quickly here, but winning a game at, at Allen Fieldhouse legitimizes the Big 12. You have all these ACC coaches for some reason that are screaming that the Big 12 is overrated. Kansas isn't just a one-off team. This isn't just, oh, they were good that year. This is a team that wins national championships. They are good across the realm of college basketball, not just the Big 12. BYU went and beat that team on the road. Kansas isn't overrated. It's impossible to overrate a blue blood that is that level of good so when BYU wins it legitimizes the strength of the Big 12 the depth of the Big 12 agree or disagree completely agree 100% that's the thing about this uh, my dad so I was uh, with him in Idaho over the weekend at a family event and he told me I didn't know he was going but he said hey I'm flying out to Kansas City on Monday I'm going to the BYU Kansas game and my exact oh. words I think were hey well enjoy Lawrence and enjoy Fog Allen Fieldhouse but we'll see how BYU does in that game I, we I had no I had no illusions that BYU was going to go in there and do what they did yeah. but the yeah. fact that they did what they did as you mentioned it legitimizes BYU it legitimizes the Big 12 as a whole because that means that any team uh, in theory can go on the road and win games. That was a massive, massive program type changing win uh, for BYU to go into Allen Fieldhouse in their first uh, venture there as a Big 12 member and pull off that victory. And the nice part was it shows yet again that BYU, it feels like at times where the wheels might be fun, c- falling off for this BYU basketball team, they seem to bounce back in, in crazy ways. They lost to Kansas State and it was like, okay, now you got to go to Kansas. Yeah. There's no way they're winning that game. Well, guess what? They, they have the whole mentality. I've said it multiple times this week on different shows and on my own podcast. They have the whole mentality. Goonies never die. I'm just going to insert. I'm going to make an edit. BYU Cougars never die. They just refuse to let it go. I love it. I also look, Jake, and this is not a conversation BYU has had the luxury of having every year, and that's seeding, right? Yeah. Most years for a lot of schools, it's I just hope we can get there. Make us whatever seed you want to. I just want to be in the big dance. Mm-hmm. For BYU, you now have the luxury of considering, huh, I wonder what will be in the NCAA tournament. And recently, Joe Lenardi has placed the Cougars at five as a five seed on that line. There is a mass. I've seen it. There's a massive difference in five and eight. If you are an eight seed, you are signing up for if you win round one against an evenly matched team, the number one overall seed or a, a number one seed. For BYU being on that five line, does that create an environment, a, a situation, a, a possibility where the Cougars are a Final Four caliber team if given the correct draw? Uh, yeah, and you know the correct draw is if they play the first two rounds in Salt Lake City because they, oh, they, yeah. they have the first two rounds at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. If that happens, BYU will have a just an incredible home court advantage. I know it's 40 miles north of Provo, but you can uh, guarantee that BYU fans will be there in droves, and that could push BYU to the Sweet 16. And if BYU makes it to the Sweet 16 with their ability to get a catch fire from the three-point line, I don't count it out of the realm of possibility. Am I anticipating that happening, a uh, final four run for BYU? Not necessarily, but the 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 path the the path is there for BYU. But I think it all starts with them staying on that five line and getting that seating that pushes them into that matchup in Salt Lake City. If you're a BYU fan, I, look, I'll say it, you don't have to. It's true. It's a lock. They're in the NCAA tournament. There's, yes. there's not, nothing can happen at this point to change that. Do you want to lose as early as possible in the Big Twelve tournament? Not necessarily because BYU, I think, wants to continue to show what they're capable of and just continue to kind of fine tune things that they've, they've got a very good basketball team this year. There's no doubt about that. They've got a very balanced squad, but I think they want to make a good impression in the Big 12 tournament. They had some very early exits during their era at the West Coast Conference. It's been over 20 years, Drake, since BYU has won a conference title. If I'm not mistaken, it was 2001 in the Mountain West uh, Championships. They last won a conference title. I'm not saying that BYU uh, can't win it. I don't don't expect them to win it, but I'd like to see them go on a run in Kansas City. I want to change your mind. Lose, lose immediately. I don't having been okay. here long enough. Just lose as fast as possible. Well, the teams. Here's the thing about this: BYU struggles on the road. Their shooting percentages have been outside of that Kansas oh, yeah. game. They have yeah. struggled and playing in a neutral venue. Uh, we'll see how that how it holds up. If their three point shooting travels, they can make a run. But yeah, if they play like they did against Kansas State, where you go six of thirty one from the three point line, you know, yeah, you're going to crash out real quick, and it would give you a chance, essentially, as you mentioned, kind of heal up and get ready for the big dance. Uh, Jake, this is I love this. This is per shot quality, which is where I go for all my basketball analytics. They know what they're talking about. They're NBA teams and college teams that have signed on as their official analytics partner says that BYU is the number 10 team in the country offensively, number 25 defensively. That was the big question. Can this team play defense? And the answer originally was uh, maybe. And now it's yes. What happened? 
Uh, honestly, the biggest thing is they have, they are essentially switching their defensive alignments possession by possession. You'll see Cahill Fennell, who is, uh, for all intents and purposes, their defensive coordinator. Each possession down the court, you'll see him flash something uh, towards these guys on the court, and you'll see them drop into a 1-3-1 one, one zone. The next possession down, they'll switch 1-5 through five in a man concept. Next possession down, it feels like they go to a 2-3 zone or a box in one. They have mixed up their defensive looks all season long, and they do it literally possession by possession, and that's been a big reason why they've been so successful on defense. It's not an easy style to play trust me they've they've had issues with it when it, it's not that locked in but when they're able to make those transitions and essentially find the defenses that work best against the opponent they're playing against their defensive ratings have held strong and you mentioned the fact that number 25 in the country that is light years i mean light years better than any of us expected going into this season it's light years better than I expected a month into the season where it was like, oh, yeah, BYU is good. The defense just isn't that great. And then yeah. now they are. And I, yeah, I, BYU is playing chess and forcing you to play checkers because when the defense changes that often, you force your opponent into street ball. And obviously it's tough to keep that up if you're the defensive team. But BYU has done it. And now they are good. Jake, if a uh, two twofold here, if there's somebody listening right now, a locked on Big 12 fans like, oh, this Jake guy's cool. I should listen to his podcast. Where can they go? And on the flip side, if they think. Man, this BYU guy has, he's blowing hot air up our skirt. He's just a big homer. Where can they go to find you still? Well, uh, yeah, you can search out the show Locked on Cougars on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. It's available free, like just like this show is Locked on Big 12. Also, if you want my thoughts on all things uh, uh, sports in general, follow me at Jacob C. Hatch on X or Twitter. And then the show's also all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Real simple to find. Locked on Cougars. Give us a follow. We'll have some fun along the way. Uh, that's Jay Cash. I'm Drake Toll. We'll see you again on Monday on our respective shows talking all things sports. This is the number one Big 12 podcast in America. And you've been listening to Locked On. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.